。科技临界点，向世界介绍中国科技。Hi, I'm Lisa. This is Threshold in China. Today, we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China last week. Don't underestimate China's ability to build its own advanced chip, despite U.S. curbs. Well, that is said by Jason Huang, the CEO and founder of Nvidia, one of the world's leading chip makers. He recently said that due to the trade and technology war between U.S. and China, Nvidia has been struggling. Last year, U.S. export controls prevented Nvidia from selling its high-end H100 and A100 chips to China. He pointed out that China has made significant progress in cloud computing, internet services, digital payments, electric vehicles, and autonomous driving technologies. China's investment in this area is substantial and should not be underestimated. More than one trillion Chinese yuan, that is roughly 140 billion U.S. dollars, is being poured into the domestic chip industries. Domestic chip makers are already benefiting from government subsidies and state-backed research projects, which are expected to help them to catch up with their international counterparts. Companies such as Huawei and Alibaba are studying ways to develop AI performance with fewer and less powerful semiconductors, or by combining different chips to reduce reliance on a single hardware. Chinese chip makers are exploring alternative solutions to develop advanced semiconductors, even as they face restrictions with U.S.-made technology. Now, on the 31st of May, China launched the world's first quantum computing cloud platform called Zhu Chongzhi, after the ancient Chinese polymath. This platform is a significant milestone in the development of quantum computing hardware, software, and the overall ecosystem. It sets a new record for the number of superconducting qubits on China's cloud platform, with 176 qubits available to users worldwide. So, what are qubits? Qubits or quantum bits serve as the fundamental unit of quantum computing. Unlike classical bits, which can only be in two states, either zero or one, qubits can exist in multiple states simultaneously, allowing quantum computers to perform certain tasks exponentially faster than classical computers. The number of qubits is a critical metric in assessing the computational power of quantum computers. The platform connects users to quantum computing devices, enabling them to conduct remote quantum computing experiments. So it is available to the general public. All right. So now, can you think of a material that is both hard and elastic? Quite hard, right? Researchers at Zhejiang University have created something called elastic ceramic plastic. By mixing organic and inorganic compounds together at a molecular level, this lets the material to be both hard and elastic. Before this, there have been attempts to create composite materials that combines the properties of organic and inorganic substances. But the researcher says the previous composite is like pouring an inorganic powder into an organic framework and then mixing it well. But at the molecular scale, the two still exist relatively independent. This team used a special molecule that has both organic and inorganic parts, and put them together in a way that makes a network with both strong and weak bonds. This makes a material that has the best parts of both organic and inorganic substances. So it is as hard as marble, as stretchy as rubber, and can be moldable as plastic. Plus, it doesn't get soft when it's heated, which makes it very useful. It could replace ceramic materials and tools, serve as bone materials in healthcare industry, or be used as armor for outdoor sports. However, further development is necessary to realize these applications. Stem cell research has been an active area of study in regenerative medicine because of their ability to differentiate into almost any cells in our body. But what happens when stem cells are grown in space? Recently, China's Tianzhou Six cargo spacecraft successfully docked, starting a six to fifteen day experiment up there. Parts of the experiment include the first ever study of human stem cells changing into blood cells under space condition. 
So why do scientists want to culture stem cells in space? Well, they have discovered that stem cells grow in space, have better 3D growth, and keep their ability to change into different types of cells better than those grown on Earth. Plus, space gave a unique chance to study how low gravity and radiation affect stem cells. And this can contribute towards development of new treatments and therapies. Moving on, primates are one of the most diverse group of mammals. We humans are primates. They have evolved for over 65 million years. On the 2nd of June, a major breakthrough in primate genome research was published on the journal Science. This was the result of the largest ever primate genome project initiated and led by Chinese scientists from the Chinese Academy of Science and Zhejiang University. This study shows that primate sociality, so how they live as a group, are to some degree determined by their genes. By discovering more about primates, the team hopes to better conserve its diversity and protect those that are endangered. Of course, by knowing more about primates, we also know more about how humans came into being. And that is all for today's Threshold. As always, please let us know if you like this new section on science and technology in China, and we'll do more in the future.